Hey what's up guys, this is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial and this time I just want to share some insights from one of my latest client projects here for Kongsberg Digital and Microsoft and when you just look at it you can see like this beautiful cube shots all over the place like you can see it here and there and here and there all right. So this was my part of the project to just add a little bit of Cinema 4D cubes magic to the whole mix and it's just so easy to create these shots in Cinema 4D if you know how to do it. So here are some examples that I just created together with the client but then of course not all of these ones can make it into the final project because you have seen like the editing is so fast and this one was just like a little bit of cherry on top of the whole project just to add like these beautiful shots to it. But as I said if you master these techniques in Simon 4D then you are just so versatile and useful for your clients for your agencies and can create like these shots really fastly like fast iterations at least if you are true mastering this one then it's just so easy to go from an iteration like this one to something like this one or to something like that just change the camera and then you have something else all right so if you master these techniques you become very very useful for clients here are two more examples on what you could do for example with these beautiful waves or something like this one mastering this in cinema 4d is just essential i would say and then maybe next time you can create shots like these ones for microsoft Okay. By the way, I was booked by this studio from Norway. Thank you very much. They have so beautiful projects on their site. So just check them out. And when I'm already here, then let me also show you that this one is me on Instagram, Marcus Gonza 3D, if you want to check out my latest artworks. And in case you want to get the full training of like six lessons or so, then you can find the full package of knowledge on my Patreon. And I'm talking about these six lessons here. So I'm starting here with Project Breakdown Part 1 and two where you get more like an understanding on how projects like these can go from day to day okay so this is some useful background knowledge but then in part three i will dive into cinema 4d and show you how you can use these mograph techniques to your advantage and to make your client very happy and then on top of this one i will give you further breakdowns of this shot this shot and this shot in several lessons and then by the end of all of these lessons you will be a true cinema 4d mograph master Master. Just be sure that I also created one exclusive lesson for my buddy Motion and Design. On his Patreon you will also find a 30 minutes lesson of really useful knowledge. But of course now it is up to me to just also share some useful knowledge here on YouTube with you guys. So I think we can just dive into a new Cinema 4D scene and start. Maybe one last thing, if you want to just stay up to date with my YouTube stuff then maybe subscribe to my channel, leave a comment if you like the tutorial but other than that let's go. All right guys and maybe we should start with something like this one. Let's try to build something like that. Of course it will not be exactly the same but I just want to give you some good ideas on how this will work. So I would say let's start with a cube and I think like a cube 200 by 200 is just a little bit big so I will go for 20 by 20 by 20. Let's put this cube into a cloner. Let's just do it like this. Now you can see the space between the cubes is way too big so this is why I put this one to 21. So there's like a margin of one between these cubes. Now this is just up to you how many cubes you want to have in your scene. I will just go for maybe something like this. Let's just see. And maybe I want to just frame this one nice in my HD format. Okay, so let's just see what we will get here. Maybe I put this one to 50. Let's go for something like that. All right, and already the scene is a little bit slow. So I would prefer to put this one to multi instance this is way more smooth i will put this one maybe to 10 let's just do it like this we need to have more along this edge all right and maybe 30 in the height or 70 here something like this or you know what let me try this one from the other angle and already i can see a little bit of distortion in my scene i really don't like to have this this all about this one is about beautiful nice undistorted angles so this is why i want to put a camera into my scene let's go into the camera let's put this one to an autographical camera and already you can see that this feels
appears like way more beautiful, especially with cubes, because now you don't have any distortion in the scene. And I would say now I just put this one to 40 to get something like this one. Let's put this one to 15. Later, you can definitely put way more clones into the scene. But for now, I would say that this is a good start. So what do we actually want to do with these clones? I would say we want to affect it with some effectors. Therefore, let's put the plane effector into the scene. Maybe you have recognized it, but our scene just went up probably 100. Yes, this is correct. So let's get rid of the position parameter here. We only want to use this plane effector for the color here. And this is already set to field color. So this is a good start. So let's go over to the fields and let's use a shader field. All right, the shader field is still doing nothing here. I can see no color. So let's just put this one to a noise. Let's go into the noise and let's maybe make the noise a little bit bigger. Let's give it a little bit more contrast here to have something like this, but still nothing is occurring on our cube. So what's the problem here? I think the problem is that when we go here to the shader field, this doesn't affect the color right now. So let's activate this little checkbox and there you go. Okay, so this is a good start, but I think that I just don't feel the black and white vibe here. So this is why I put this one into a layer shader. Let's go into the noise and I want to put this one. Let me just see. Let's put this one to a nice blue here. I want to make it bigger. Let's do it like that. Okay. I can still not feel it. It's pretty boring. So how about the cubes layout like this one? Let's just try this one. Okay. I like it. Let's just give it more contrast and brightness to get something like this one. Maybe I want to make this one bigger to get something like this one. Let's just see. So when I let this one animate, nothing is happening here. So I want to maybe give this some speed in this axis. Okay, like this is way too fast. So I will put this one to 0 0.5 and maybe I will just make this one smaller. Let's go for something like this one. All right, a noise like this will be a bit hectic when it changes from cube to cube. So you could also go for something else, for example, like this one. Let's just make this one bigger. Let's see how this one is moving. Okay, like I think that this one is more interesting. I just make it bigger. Let me also get rid of the too much blue to get something like that. And now it's it is up to you to maybe just stretch this one a little bit. I think I want to, let's just see what we can get here. Okay. Okay. Maybe I want to stretch it like this one. And I also want to animate the noise in itself. So I don't want to just give it speed here, but I also want to animate the noise in itself. Let's just see what is happening now. Okay. I like this one, but it's way too fast. So I just put this one to 0 0.2 to give it a little bit of movement, but also a little bit of speed in the Y axis. And I think, I think that I like this one. Okay. That's cool. That's a good start, but I just don't want to have one color I want to have several colors this is why I will click on this one and and click on copy shader go to shader and paste the shader on top of it this one you want to set to for example to darken all right nothing is happening because this one has the same pattern so let's just go into this one let's give it another color like this one and let's just see what will happen when I change this parameter here a little bit all right now you get a bit of another color I would also say you change the seed let's go for something like this to just make it more interesting. This is a good start, but once again, I want to paste the shader on top of it, go into the selection mode, set it to darken. All right. And I think like this one could be, maybe we just go for a really toxic green like this one, but I want to put this one to 10. All right. And I would just change this one a little bit. I will also change the seed. Let me see what I will get here. Something like this one, for example. Okay. Of course you have to polish this one further. I just want to give you some ideas, but now you can see we get some really crazy colors on our clones. So what can we do next? Maybe we should just go here, create another plane effector. And basically you can do everything with the plane effector. Okay. You just have to work with fields and set it up correctly. But this one is not doing what we want. We don't want to colorize anything. So let's turn this one off. Otherwise you will override the colorization from our first plane effector. And you could also call this one color if you want to be just a bit more professional. That is not essential, but you could do it. Okay. The second one is moving everything up. Let me just see. Yes, this one is moving everything up. So I don't think this is what I want to do here. I just want to give it some rotation maybe and not along this axis, but maybe along this axis. Let's put this one to 90. And actually we could use 
now the same shader field for the second one. So maybe I will just copy this shader field over there. You could also put it into hierarchy, but this is not essential. You could call this one one just to be sure that this one is not the same here. Let's go to our plane effector. Let's go to the fields and you have to also drag this one in. But now this one is using the same noises here to give all of this one a rotation. Maybe you just want to have the rotation on the blue noise here. All right. So this could be an option if you want to do it like this. Let's just see what will happen now. All right. It's definitely restricted to certain areas, but I think I should reverse this one. Let's put this one to black and this one to white. So now you will have just like these areas here, which will rotate. You could also see this one a little bit better when you just deactivate one of the effectors, but this is the effect we have right now. Okay. I think that this is interesting. I just want to maybe change it a little bit. All right. And now we're when I think about it, it doesn't really have to be based on the same shader noises. Okay, so you could totally change this one, make this one just a little bit more small, uh, a little bit more slow and also blow this one up to get something like this one. Let's just change this one completely. All right, I just want to see what I'm getting here. Okay, now you get a nicer effect where it's blending in the other areas better. I really like this one. Okay, that's nice. So now you have some beautiful rotation on these ones, but also some colorization. This is really nice. Let's just go into the parameter and maybe I want to rotate this one even 180 to get a stronger rotation effect there. You could also try to combine it with some upwards movement like this one. Okay, that's an option, but let's try another axis. This one doesn't make so much sense. So maybe let's try to move these ones forward. Let's just see how this one is looking. All right, now you get like this forward wave on top of it. I really think that this one is an interesting effect. Let's just frame it a little bit differently. Let's look at it like that. And now maybe what you could also do is to just create another plane effector. You can see you can do a lot with plane effectors, but this one, we also don't want to use the color, but we just want to make certain areas disappear. Let's put this one to minus one. Now everything will disappear. Once again, it is time to call for the shader field. Let's go into it. Let's put a noise into it. Let's go into the noise. Let's put this one really hard to the limit here with a high contrast between black and white. Now let's blow this one up to maybe 6,000 or something like that. I also want to animate this noise, of course. Let's make it smaller. Let's give it more brightness to do something like this one. Let's put it to 3,000. I once again want to stretch it along a certain axis. All right, to get something like this one. Okay, I can make it bigger to get another effect, but already you can see that this one looks pretty interesting. I wouldn't say that you win an award with the setup like that. But if you change it and for example, put the delay on the bottom and just make sure that the delay here in the hierarchy is also at the bottom and put the delay to a blend like 70, then it will just become a bit more graceful. It will just be butterly smooth here. All right. And just be a little bit more gentle. Without it, you can see it's more hectic. So a blend at the bottom is always a nice option if you want to go for that soft look. So I wouldn't say that it is the same setup like like this one, but I think that at least you got a good understanding of how to colorize your clones, how to eat away certain pieces of your structure and just create some really nice gentle wave effect here. So yes, this is just a glimpse of the knowledge here on YouTube. As you already know, to get the full package of knowledge, check out my Patreon or you can also get this lesson here on motion and designs Patreon. So thank you so much for your time and see you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.